on the troll. Hello and welcome back to Mzansi. We're back again. It is that time where we have to obviously give you what you missed yesterday, the day before yesterday, and now we're yeah. doing that. Obviously, yeah. we're not yeah. going to yeah. leave any stone unturned. No, we cannot. Um, we apologize. Things like this do happen. Emily, yeah. um, just greet and let's hit the ground and run. This is what we need to do. Okay, guys, we've decided to uh, cover this as an upload. We will be back on the live streams. We're just shorting out the internet issues, okay? We'll be back, I promise. Don't we promise, Mr. Anonymous? You're promising, right? We do. Yes. So, you guys, we could not fall back too far behind, but we need to cover everything. You know, here on Mzansi Reality, we always cover everything. So, we are going to the Wednesday session of the trial okay and there are some important facts and important points that we've picked up and we think you guys also picked up too so welcome to the mzanti reality youtube channel this is where we unpack the sins of meiwa trial and we unpack and unpack it in Dagabao. so to on wednesday what had happened was that the brigadier was back on the stand uh, for continuing cross-examination by and advocate Zandilem Shololo. There was a late start due to the accused uh, still being at Koshimamburu prison. Now it's been like two or three consecutive days of accused number two being brought late to the court. And I wonder why. Yeah. And have you noticed as well, Mr. Anonymous, that there's the reduced redu the, the hand you know when they used to lift up their hands to answer yes, questions, yes. to 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 ask the their counsel questions or to add on information that was important. Whatever happened to that? It's no longer happening, and I wonder why. I, I guess there is consultation that is happening during the the proceedings. So, uh, if you think about it, how many times Ngomezul has had to excuse himself? He only no, talks about. No, he would about only a, a, a recuse or excuse himself to seek clarity on something that he wanted clarity on as his cross examination. Yeah, that means uh, that would mean Ngomezul understands now what is being briefed on by these guys. Uh, hence, the story you can see even is when even during the times of objecting, he is objecting. From his, from his head, basically. So can we say that before the consultations was not happening in a productive manner? It, no, it, it was. Uh, it was mostly people who are new, and then um, there was n less consultation at the time. I think, mm -hmm. but on the basis of this, there's like a bit of teamwork that you can see that. Uh, Gomez Zulu probably consult with them and such that he understands and can object on the stories, the integrities of the stories that they, they that he was narrating. So during the narrating of that story, um, I think he got to 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 know and understand the whole case, basically. Mm. Mm. Um, and if you look at the previous uh, group of, of uh, attorneys, they were not in this situation where they have to narrate the story of of the accused that much. Mm. It was mostly the main trial where everything was everywhere. Okay, okay. So, Mshololo asked, yesterday I asked you about the report of the assault by accused number one, which was conveyed to you. And Gininda said, yes, Mshololo read what the Independent Police Investigative Directorate states are the cases which can be investigated, which include the cases of assault. Mm -hmm. Mshololo said, it says, matters meant to be investigated according to IPID Act include of course, laying of hands after receiving to report you where you were supposed to re report it to IP to be investigated. Mm. Did you do that? Mm. And Gininda said he, you know, at that moment when Gininda was about to answer, I heard the judge and that whole, <laughs> that, that 
you know, laugh. Sarcastic he, laughing. Yeah, mm. in the background. And he answered by saying, it speaks to a formal complaint. All entries showed that he was not assaulted. He referred to an official complaint that must be captured on the police data. There must be traceable data. He says the complainant did not give a statement. What do you take to IPID when you lay a complaint and it was not registered by the complainant? So you can never... Um, so, like, you never took him to a surgeon to determine whether he was assaulted or not. That's that's basically what I got from the situation. Yeah. So what Gininda is saying that he just... Uh, he couldn't put it to IPID because there was no complaint to begin with. Yeah. So that complaint that accused number one made in the Tembisa court mm. ended up not being recorded mm. because he said when he went to the police stations to ask, there was no formal complaint written on the OB entries. Yes. Hmm. So Mshalolo wanted Brigadier Gininda to read a paragraph F again, and the judge interrupted Mshalolo to ask Gininda about legal representation of accused number one and two on the 5th of March 2021, the last appearance that they made at the Boxberg Magistrate Court before the trial was moved to the Pretoria High Court. Mm. Now, he said that he received a complaint from his clients that they were being, you know, they were being beaten. Mm. Right. So Ms. Tangwana was the attorney. Just uh, in advance, we are not going to be calling certain names, guys. And uh, I think you, you have noticed that with Emily struggling to you pronounce know, some of the names. I but uh, just not to give a class here. We're not here to give a class. Um, we're limited in, in, in that sense. So just understand when he, he talks about the harsh treatment, uh, that's what Emily is referring to. Yeah, so he told Nkwani to assist his clients to lay a charge, this Mr. Nkwani. Uh, that's what Brigadier Kininda said. He said he told this Mr. Nkwani to lay a charge, a criminal charge. Mm. And this was the judge uh, being a character witness again for the Brigadier. And he said, Mr. Mgomizulu said that that's the evidence. Okay, so the judge continued to say that if you find or get any problems with the commissioner of police must be approached so that a formal complaint can be laid. The judges asked if it has been done. And Gomezulu wanted to ask his clients first and wanted to know if they were referring to the complaint complainant of accused number one made at the Silverton police station. Mm. Please keep in mind that at the time, the commissioner of police was Ketla Sitole, who appointed Brigadier Gininda, according to him, as he was testifying on this case, allegedly. Mm. Mm. So mm. the judge asked, how do we launch a complainant? Is it through an affidavit or verbally. And Mshololo said, my lord, I think it would be unfair for me to cross-examine or to be cross-examined by, by the, the court. court. Yes, that, that's that's a correct assertion. I, 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 I do not uh, understand uh, where the judge comes with these things. Is it what? He's trying to say that as long as there's no something filed... Um, there's nothing filed. Yes, then, then it has no merit. Then it has no merit. The, the funny thing, however, is that uh, on a different court and uh, with a different charge of no color for that matter, probably w this would be listened to. Yes, it yeah. would. So how, if you are claiming that you are dealing with the corrupt cops, as this is suggesting that here they were dealing with the, the corrupt cops. That's the, that's 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 what I'm I'm gathering from this, and obviously that's my opinion on the basis of what they've submitted the defense. So, how are they going to report those police to the same police? That is baffling me as well. Is that how are they expected to tell
hell on themselves. Just one. just a bit of submission. We are talking about people here who can move you around to any police station. Mm-hmm. And I want to also paint that part of not only move you to any police station, they kind of move you there and they are in charge. They can take you out, back in. The power that these people seem to exert when they arrive in your area is too much. It is. To such an extent, if you are poor. To such an extent that they went to um, when Danzi was working. Yes. They arrested Danzi for ammunition. Yes. And the court there seemingly did not ab- oblige. It did not oblige. It was not... Same as the case that they caught. Mm. Do you and understand? They threw it out. They threw this thing out. So that tells you the kind of people that these people were, in my own opinion, the character of these people and the, the, the extent in which these people are authoritative. Mm. That, that, that to me, as an outsider, I don't need the paperwork to hear that. On the basis that you move around box back to, you know, you, you just do things based on what is being narrated here. Mm. It, it requires one to be objective mm. and also mix it maybe with being subjective. And you must also consider other things. These people, first time, first, first, very first time in their lives that they were actually getting arrested. They wouldn't know these procedures. Look, uh, look uh, le- le- let us not put a blanket approach here. Mm-hmm. We, we, we are in particular talking about dance. All right. That's not these people. Maybe in dance. Dance, yes. yes. He's a good example of yes. the point I'm trying to make. Yes. That he, he probably didn't know, like, the, understand the system, the, the system of the other side when you are locked up. Mm. how you can complain, who you're supposed to complain to, stuff like that. You know, I I doubt he knew or understood what needed to be done. And obviously when you get inside, the former inmates are telling you that, you know, don't make too much noise. So that's probably the conversations that are happening, that you're going to be punished. No, no. let let us submit on the basis of what this thing is being uh, narrated as. Mm. In most of these times when these things were happening, Danzi was isolated. He was. That is a submission. Yes. So, when you say Danzi was isolated, he could not access the information such as that. Only a person who's learned, who understands the constitutional, constitutional right that he has as a person who stands accused mm. and incarcerated mm. or is detained. Mm. Mm. That person then would be able to apply the logic that requires... Uh, to follow up and do certain things in a certain way. Yes. But yes. this person in particular, Danz, was a person who was arrested for the first time. Mm. Not unless Brigadier is saying that this person has been arrested before. He should be uh, having a bit of an understanding of what is or was happening. Mm. We are talking about someone who doesn't have higher qualifications. You even heard in the court he was speaking in Sisul. Yes. It is your duty uh, to enable that person and assist that person with that regard. Hmm. So you would have expected a fair person to go back and say, I heard you in court, you are saying one, two, three. Mm. Don't you want one, two, three to be done? Mm. But because uh, according to our learned judge, uh, which is right. Rob Hesoff. Yes. Rob versus the, uh, Rob, Hepworth. Re, Rob versus Hepworth. Yes. <laughs> it Rob was not applied here. Yes. Because in all fairness, we were supposed to say as an investigator who is not hiding anything, who doesn't have anything to hide, say, Danzi, I heard you saying one, two, three. Mm. So I would like to assist you or even get an independent person to come uh, 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 and assist you. Mm. 
Mm, mm. You understand? Yes. I would even go as further in, as 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 calling I paid myself mm. because I've got nothing to hide. And on top of that, I do not want to have a miscarriage of this of this case. Yes, definitely. But the person who's harboring something would look at that as a loophole and keep quiet. The question is, what did you do as a police of law? What did you do to assist a citizen? Your job is not only to assist the person who has passed away in this case, which is Senzo, is to also make sure that the rights of all the citizens are not infringed on. And in this case, there was that element as you are submitting in the court that this is the case. Mm -hmm. And he thought maybe perhaps the court would be able to assist in this case. Little did he know that as it, as it grew, he would realize that he will even be muted by some of the courts that he went to. Of which that was the case. Don't speak to me. Speak through your lawyer. Do, do you understand? And th those are things that as a person who who's looking to, 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 to investigate and get the case rolling in a right way would not overlook Mm. He would look at means of assisting that person. Mm. And perhaps, what did you do as a person who's supposed to apprehend, apprehend law? Mm. And another aspect that I had hoped that the defense would kind of labor or hammer on just after finishing this, this section of what would you have done or what would you do is, is maybe it's because I watch American courts too much, ne? But what I would have liked for them to do was to finish it. Finish it how? By saying that, okay, you are saying that uh, you would have done the right thing. Or you start by asking, what is the f proper procedure that you would have been taken should accused number one actually be, have been assaulted and you made the investigation and you found those findings that he has been assaulted? And how would that affect your case? We, we are bringing the weight back, but it's, it, it just doesn't make sense if you look at it. And we are in a situation where people who should have assisted this man, they overlooked that process. Mm. Um, perhaps the same way when, when they reported during the beginning of this case in that court of Ma Maumel, they were also overlooked. It's like there's a lot of turning the other cheek happening. Yes. Turning the other cheek. It's like, what are you saying? Turning the other mm. cheek. So, yeah, the judge said to Miss Mshololo, I'm not cross-examining you. I just want to understand the law. Mshalala then said, may I then be given the opportunity to put questions to the witness? The judge said, no, I want to understand the law. And Mshalala clarified to say that she was not referring the, to the court appearance of the 5th of March 2021. She was referring to what accused number one said in the Tembisa court about the Silverton police officers on the 10th of July 2020. Mm. Um, Shalala, with that complaint, she said, that was relayed to you, Brigadier Gininda. What did you do with that complaint? Because IPID Act says it must be referred to for further investigations. Mm. And Baloy said Mshololo should have printed a copy of the act and it must be read in conjunction with the regulations. He was accusing Mshololo of reading it in isolation. He then continued to read the entire thing, which said, and I quote, a person who launches a complaint must do it in writing by fax or electronic mail. Again, I ask, how are they supposed to do that in jail? What if you are illiterate? Worse, you don't even have a lawyer, or never mind a state lawyer, where you are in a state of being incarcerated and lawyerless. Mm -hmm. And worse, you can't write or read English or write letters. And by the way, how are they supposed to do that in a jail cell? How do, where do they sit down and write such letters of complaints? That is the question that I have. It so did it not make sense to me also. I mean, if, if you claim that um, 
these things must be submitted in that manner. I don't think when they were writing that law, they were they were referring to the to the person who's 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 incarcerated. Mm. They were probably referring to someone who's outside. Someone who's outside who has access to those things. Mm. So it's very dangerous to read the act in isolation, Baloy said. It must be read together with the regulation, which makes it clear that a complaint must be in writing as the witness has testified. Mshololo asked if she could move on. and Exactly. It just didn't make sense. <laughs> and I like the attitude. She was. She was on fire. <laughs> So Mshonola then said, I put it to you, if you complied with the provisions of this section and independent members of IPID would have been appointed to approach the accused, obtain the necessary statements, and also do uh, to do further investigations. Gininda said that that is not correct. In Gininda's world, you need to have a complainant statement. What do I comply with when I do not have anything? was Gininda's response. The feedback I got was that accused number one was not willing to make a statement. Subsequent to that, all relevant entries showed that he was not assaulted. Now, in that absence of the complaint, what do you prefer, my lord? So you are telling me that people uh, investigate you, right? So you're supposed to lay complaints when you are being, you know, massaged physically. You're supposed to lay those complaints to the very same people who are investigating you. It seems like that. Mshalala now referred Gininda to a pro forma form that is used in interviews with suspects. It's 3M, paragraph 1A, read by Gininda. He said, the station commander must consult with the prosecutor on circumstances in which the prosecutor requires that a warning statement of a suspect be obtained. In every such case, a suspect must be interviewed and this statement must be completed. The statement must be completed every time the suspect is interviewed, irrespective of whether the suspect has been arrested or not. Mshalala asked him, do you understand understand that uh, this must be completed every time there's an interview irrespective of whether the suspect has been charged or not that the line i wanted you to bring to your attention and gininda said but my lord council is leaving something out important that it says this form refers to that interview as directed by the prosecutor there's a difference in that the police there's no way it refers to interviews of the police it is very very specific you are directed by the prosecutor to obtain an explanation then naturally you communicate the outcome of the suspect in the form of a warning statement to the NPA and that is what paragraph one says I, I couldn't believe my ears hearing what I was hearing. <laughs> it's like he twisted it to say that it only applies to the prosecutor and not to them as police officers. They work differently. And then on to top it off, a commissioner of oaths or a commissioner, is it a commissioner of what, what? The one who takes confessions. Aren't they bestowed the same powers as that of a magistrate when it comes to taking confessions? That is what we heard last time when we were, when we were told about these things initially. That is what we heard. So now he's completely taking out that element to say that that's not how it works. Mm. Now he's making up his own rules, it sounds, in my opinion, because Advocate Mshololo made him read that into the record on Peppos. Yes. And his answer completely debunks what he read. Mm -hmm. So Mshololo then said, no, it does say so. And Baloy stood to object, saying that we've been down this road before. When Sergeant Mohani was testifying, I think we even quoted authorities and filed heads in this matter. It was debated, I think. It's a matter that can be best left for argument. And the judge said, I don't know how it impinges on the trial within a trial, because at this stage, this court is busy, seized with the exigency of the trial within a trial, which is a compact interlocutory process, which has its bearing as to 
whether confessions made by any of the accused or a witness, if there's a dispute that it was not freely or voluntarily made without coercion in a person's sane and sober senses. So if a prima facie case is made by the prosecutor after having advised the court that the intends using the document which is supposedly or allegedly a confession then when the state has led that evidence they accuse themselves if they so desire they come with countervening evidence to come and uh, rebut the allegation by the state which are laid down by its witnesses this is what the process is about it's not about merits but if you're saying that the question you are asking relates to the admissibility and otherwise, okay, no problem, you can go ahead. But I have said the song for so long and this process is about the admissibility of the confession. I'm confused as to then what qualifies to be under admissibility and what qualifies to be under merits. The merits of the case the admissibility of the case isn't it touching almost the same 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 line at some point if for for one using that example of the statement mm-hmm. i'm sure Lolo can prove that something was not followed with regards to that statement yes being taken now does that mean that we can overlook that breaking of, Gomez will call it. It's not even breaking of the law in a sense. It's it's that's let's say because we are looking forward to proving that the statements they did them or they did not do them prior to that, but there was something broken. Can it be healed? And then we assume that. After healing it, then we are able to use that information as as an as an information that should be admitted. So if we can stop the bleeding from the beginning, why should we continue to this to the wound itself and and try to 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 mediate there? Mm. Because if there is a bleeding that can be stopped and that bleeding can heal the wound, I don't understand why. We should continue doing or going deeper to the wound, regardless of what we know with regards to bleeding. If we can stop that bleeding, then we don't need to go to the to to to, to the core of 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 these statements. Mm. 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 And and considering what the accused are saying about the statements that they were already written and they were forced to sign. Yes. Right. So. Why it's is one it a way of every killing time the they cat. try to go and go for how they were taken or the processes that they were supposed to take when they were taking those confessions? Mm. It's almost like it's shut down. Before we should only talk about it, it the matures. statements themselves, yes, or before it marinates. In like, a <sighs> sense, in a sense, by talking about these statements, you might end up opening that can of worm of talking about what is in what is contained inside that, those statements the content of the statements, therefore making it more admissible. Mm. Well, Gininda said that he wanted to bring the court to the attention that the form um, Shololo was referring to is not the prescribed form. That is not the only form that they are using. There are no prescribed forms in the warning statement. So it's not a golden rule that it is the only one that must do it. So they have various warning statements. So this is not the way that a warning statement must be done. This is not the only way. Uh, Perhaps this man could have just produced such. Mm-hmm. So to, to dwell on it and say, Mshololo produced one and said, this is the way we should go to East. Mm-hmm. If he's diffusing that, he should say, I don't think that is the case. There is a, a, a form called one, two, three, and that form also goes to eventually to the East. Okay, so Mshalala said that she is the one asking questions and she will not be arguing with him. The form she was referring him to is the form that was prescribed by the SAPS 
And Gininda wanted to go on and on, and Mshololo did not want to hear it. The judge asked Mshololo if we are in a tavern, reminding her that this is a brigadier. So as a brigadier, it's a question I have. Is he allowed to give essays as answers to simple questions? Nyabuz, Angil, Nyabuz. Just ask him. So Mshololo, as the senior member of the police, um, he's supposed to answer the question. I have asked and stop right there. That's Mshololo telling the brigadier that I don't need these essays that you're giving me. Just answer the question. And then stop. Instead of reading paragraph B, because she had prior asked him to read paragraph B where she was disagreeing with him about how a statement is supposed to be written. So instead of doing that uh, and complying with the instruction that she had given him, he's coming with explanations which she has not asked. Uh, and she's the cross-examiner of these proceedings. So Gininda said that I'm here to assist the court and not to allow an insinuation which is misleading. And the judge laughed as he said this. I heard the laugh. I heard it. It is incorrect to say that this is the only form allowed by the SAPS. There are many forms, just like there are many, many cases against Ndanzi. Our and police would no, not... There is no proof of many forms. Is, and our police would not keep up with many, many forms for one way of doing things. They have a lot to deal with. There's a lot of crime in the country. So imagine if you had these many, many forms that you had to learn the procedure of filling them in. Mm. It's too much. So I, I honestly, in my opinion, I don't work in the SAPS. I don't have family members that are in the SAPS. But I know that... I don't think this is what he's saying has any any weight on it. Can you imagine before you fill in a form, you have to learn a procedure of how to fill in that form or how to and then there's many ways within that system of filling in the form. I don't think our police have time for that. In my opinion, there's only one way in my opinion. So the police can correct me if I'm wrong and the brigadier is right. I could be wrong. Right? Then Shololo asked him to read paragraph B. The member who conducts an interview with the suspect has to complete this form fully in the presence of the suspect. If there's not enough space in the pages of the member, must continue on a separate follow page. And he read a paragraph D and F and paragraph 6. So if the suspects indicate that he or she is willing to answer any questions with it, this refusal must be recorded. Isn't that interesting? Mm. that if a suspect says they don't want to answer any questions, mm -hmm. then that must be recorded. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, also that uh, if they're not willing to make a statement, the member, uh, the suspect may personally see the drawing up of a statement or make a statement to the magistrate or the justice of the peace. If neither of these choices are acceptable to the suspect, then he or she has another proposal and it should be recorded. Mshalala went to the transcript of the 28th of November 2023 and it's the examination in chief of the brigadier. Mshalala read what he said um, and he said this and I quote, after I have put it to him that I have a reason to believe that he was involved in the killing of Senzo Meiwa, his response, my lord, tatamounted to a confession. Please absorb this. So he says that he put it to accuse number one, that he had a reason to believe that he was involved in the killing of Senzo Meiwa, and his response tatamounted to a confession. We discussed this. We deliberated on it, actually, when it happened, I remember. So Mshalala asked, what is it that the accused said that it amounted to a confession? Well, the judge stopped her to ask if she's aware that when you are asking this witness to repeat what your client has said, then the evidence could be applicable in this court, determining the admissibility otherwise of the confession. You know, And Mshalala asked to rephrase the question, asking it this way this time around. And she asked, is it correct that the accused responded when you were speaking to him in respect to this 
passage I've read to you. And Gininda said that's correct. Mshalolo asked, how did the accused become aware of the independent officer? And Gininda said, I asked him as to whether he will be willing freely and voluntarily to make a statement because I was aware he was making a confession freely and voluntarily. That's how he got in contact with an independent officer. So imagine this, right? You get uh, arrested for a certain case, right? You are told you are searched and they find illegal substances in your pockets and uh, 580 and now you have these charges against you related to illegal substances and you know dealing in illegal substances and then as you are being arrested for that and you are attending for that and then uh, you are now told that we suspect that you are involved in the Senzo Meiwa case right and then now after that accusation, you now begin to sing. Shouldn't you be concerned about what took you out of your home in the first place? Yeah, you should. So this this is very strange. So Mshololo asked, it was not recorded during the interview. And Gininda said, recorded where? Because like I said, I have summarized my interaction with accused number two in my diary. Subsequent to that, there were statements under oath that I've made. Some I have read here at the request of Mr. Mgomezul. So if the question is to say that they are not recorded on the warning statement, the council has referred me to the answer is yes. Because, yeah. This is a very ambiguous answer, in my opinion. I did not get... <laughs> I did not get what he was saying. <laughs> then Mshonola asked him to show them in the diary where it says that the accused was informed that they would making a confession to an independent officer. Gininda said it might not have come as independent because it's a diary, but he mentioned that Colonel Mboto and even included his cell phone numbers. I heard Nabo Rapad being thrown there. It was quite a long answer, but again, he was defending himself to say that in the diary he didn't have to put uh, that it's an independent officer that he's contacting. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Then Mshololo said, he said in a diary, you sum up, you cannot write like you're writing the statement. Was it recorded that he elected to make a pointings out, accused number one? Then Gininda said he was warned on the 30th of May 2020. I gave him his rights and things started flowing. They just flow, things, hey? Yeah, they do. They flow. They do flow. They flow. Imagine this. You are being accused of a crime. You are not being shown proof, mm. but you confess. You are not being shown evidence that, look here, the CCTV cameras captured you in that place on that night. Or, you know, people, 15,000 people saw you that night. Or we picked up your DNA in that crime scene. Or something tangible like that, but you confess. Mm. So Mshalola then said, was the accused take, talking to the district surgeon before and after he was taken to Colonel Mboto? Was he taken to a district surgeon? And Gininda said, no. Um, Mshalola asked, can you see if he was taken to the doctor? He would have been a neutral person to examine accused number one and confirm whether, you know, what had happened to him happened to him mm -hmm. and the doctor would have recorded the j88 and recorded it if there were any injuries and gininda said nowhere does the requirement say that he must be taken to a district surgeon nowhere does it say he must be taken to a doctor before a confession is taken and i was like wow so you are telling me that these are people 
in the same job, in the same vicinity. You know, you're my colleague and I feel for you. I probably have an idea of how much you need this job, right? I know that you've got responsibilities. You may possibly even have debts. I know that you need this job, my colleague, right? And then I'm supposed to throw you under the bus and write that you did one, two, three, four, five to a prisoner. Do you honestly expect me to do that? No, it's not expected. So there was a short adjournment, or rather quite a long one. Um, it was hot in that courtroom. Um, Shalolo was complaining about the heat. <laughs> he said, can we have the air con? <laughs> but then after that adjournment, um, Shalolo asked, do you agree when you interviewed accused number two, he was a suspect? And Gininda said, yes. Shalolo asked, you indicated when you interviewed accused number two that he didn't want to appoint a legal representative. So on the 18th and 19th, he didn't have a lawyer. And Gininda said yes. Mshalolo asked, when did you learn he had a legal representative? And Gininda said on the 23rd of June, 2020. Mshalolo asked, was it the first time you met Mr. Mjiak on that day? And Gininda said yes. Mshalolo asked, do you know that Mr. Mjiak was a member of the SAPS up until 2016? Gininda said, I didn't know that. Mshololo then said, and when you said you were working with Crime Intelligence Unit, it said that Mjiako was working with the Crime Intelligence Unit. Mm. And Gininda's cold case works with the Crime Intelligence Unit. They worked with them when they were arresting the accused. Mm -hmm. So Gininda said yes. Then Mshololo asked, and Mjiako was working in crime intelligence unit, and Gininda said that he didn't know that. He denied, denied, denied. He said, it, I, 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 he's never, I have never come across him. I have never come across him. Mshololo then said, have you ever been accused of forcing people to confess and make statements? Before Gininda responded, the state interjected, and Musha Lolo said no further questions. So advocate George Baloy for the state re-examined Gininda. Uh, yeah, I picked up a couple of things with the re-examination. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all is that he made Gininda go through every single page on the statement saying that there was no blood stains, no blood stains, no blood stains because accused number two said that on that statement that he had signed that was done with Magistrate Grunier, there should have been blood, blood stains thing. on it. But if, if, if accused number two is saying that um, he did not write that confession himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can always get someone to type or write the Or words. write it again. Mm. And provided that they didn't write it themselves as well. You are quite bringing up an important point. I mean, if, if if he didn't write it, remember how in South Africa statements are taken. Sometimes you speak to the police officer and they write for you. Some of them even refuse for you to write for yourself. I think one of the, conf the conditions that should be made is that when you confess, you must just write the statement yourself in your own handwriting. That's only fair. Because right now, it's like, okay, if it came written, then the very same person who wrote it before can always write it again mm. on a new clean page that yes. has no blood yes. stains. Mm. Just asking. <laughs> While denying that he offered a bribe, he said that it's the other way around. You know, when he was being asked about that, about the bribery situation of three million, of course he was denying it. But he brought up a lot of things that left me like, huh? huh? Why is he talking about political stuff? You know, he mentioned the Zondo Commission there. He was trying to make an example that it happens the other way around. Police officers are the ones who get offered bribes. It's rare for uh, police officers to offer people bribes so that they can confess to crimes. You know, and then he was saying that he worked in the Zondo Commission. Um, he was saying that uh, even in the Zondo Commission, there were allegations of bribery. I'm like, why are you bringing up the Zondo Commission here? 
No, you're trying, you speak in essays, but these essays of yours are getting you into a lot of conundrums. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He was trying to show the power that he has. Oh, I mean, for me, that maybe to like show that. that maybe that I'm dealing with huge cases. I'm mm. dealing with bombastic political cases. That's according to me, yes. Well, he said that it's the first time that he heard of th the three million allegations in, in court, you know, and it's strange to me because they were making the rounds last year, even three, two, three years ago by the families of the accused. Mm. They've been strongly saying that they were offered that three million. And he's saying that it was the first time he heard it under cross-examination by Mr. Mgomezul. I find difficult to believe that. I find it very difficult in my opinion. Yeah. Mm. So Gininda said that with regards to Mr. Nkwana, the one who was representing accused number one and number two, number th number two and number three, they said that they were being tortured. Mm. Gininda said that he checked the OBs of um, where they were uh, detained, and the reports that there was there were any bitterizations taking place were not there. This OB, they only rely on these OB records for mm. some reason. It's, it's the, the, the thing that is supposed to convince the public opinion, the court of public opinion that these OBs are legit, you know. They are legit. <laughs> Whatever you write in it is fact. It's like a recording. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said that he spoke to the head of the center and they disposed the affidavits to say that there's no reports of assault. And in this essay, um, a proof answer that he gave, he wanted to also uh, implicate accused number three. Okay, he said that uh, accused number three, they also did investigations. He wants to say that accused number three lied about him receiving the bitterizations. Hmm. So Nisi stood up and said that that's not relevant because accused number three does not feature in this trial within a trial. He said that there are statements where accused number two and number three deny, deny being massaged by the hands. So Ginina says he has statements. <laughs> where well, accused number two and number three deny that the police laid their hands on them. I don't know my statement here. I shall move Like we are bala. Everything in the sense of me your child has been written, rewritten, written, written. You know, it's a lot of writing happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said that the Nongoma docket has many other dockets, but Kenisalani has been sentenced with a conviction and it has many other dockets, the ones that they're trying to implicate uh, accused number two in. Allegedly. Allegedly. They are connecting him. They've connected him. And I find it strange that this docket has many other dockets when the, the case is kind of has a conviction it's 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 perplexing and the judge is has, doesn't have any questions so it's normal to him yep it's normal so the judge asked that since he knows soweto does he not know of any other dumping sites with atms the judge here was asking brigadier gininda after he was done with his uh, testimony he does that thing that he always does guys Banking. Yeah. Rebuting and uh, fighting for the state. He did it again with the dumping sites and the ATMs that were not working. Okay, he asked that uh, he grew up, he said he grew up in Alexander. He mentioned a lot of places in Gauteng. And he also said that he married and settled in Soweto, right? And he does not know of any dumping sites with ATMs. The judge said that he was even married in Soweto, you know. And Gininda said that there's no dumping site in Soweto. And there's no dumping site for ATMs. Look at that. Look at how it has moved from there was a dumping site with ATMs that looked like they were not working to a dumping site for ATMs. Mm. 
Those are two different things. The meaning has changed. <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> and I'm asking myself, why are you twisting it like <laughs> Why is it being twisted to a dumping site for ATMs? No one knows a dumping site for ATMs. But have you seen an ATM that's not working? I have many times. I've seen ATMs that are not working. Right? Yes. So why would an investigating officer, he said, um, investigate uh, the suspects? Uh, right on the OB entries that they have been uh, massaged and that they... That's the question I have also. Like, why would you tell on yourself as a police officer? Mm. Why would you tell on yourself? Why would you write, uh, I took accused number two out, uh, and I massaged him with my hands outside by a dumping area. Would you, would you write something <laughs> No. Why would you tell yourself on yourself? So I find it quite strange that the judge is also running with this narrative, you know. It, it's also strange. Well, the next witness that they called was Colonel Swanepoel, who came to testify on the extracts of the co- occurrence book at the Silverton police station where accused number one said that he was beaten. He is the station commander of Pretoria Moor Police Station, and he was previously the station commander of Silverton Police Station, where accused number one raised the complaint that he was massaged by the hands. Sonapo has 41 years uh, services in SAPS, and Sonapo became a station commander of Silverton SAPS in 2016. <coughs> he was there for seven years. Sonapo says that all SAPS documents, including the occurrence books, are kept at the police station. And Baloy asked, what are those documents? And Sonapo said all documents required by a police station, including occurrence books, the SAP 13 were all evidence is recorded. He said that there's a national instruction on the treatment of people in custody. Sonapol described what an OB occurrence book is and what it's used for. It's documents to the state of the accused, injuries, health, as well as visitors, and etc. So Sonapol said that if a person comes with an injury, he must be taken to by the officer on duty to a health facility. He says the suspects won't be allowed inside the cell with an injury. Sonapol now went to accuse number one's arrest at Silverton Police Station and he read from an occurrence book and it showed that he was brought at Silverton Police Station on the 3rd of July 2020 around 10 p.m. Baloy asked what is the name of the person here on the cell register and of course he said Buzisvia. Baloy asked when was that and Sonapol said he was detained in 2027 at 10 o'clock at night. Now, Swanepo said that the suspect was detained by Mohani. Now, with this witness, Mr. Anonymous, Mm -hmm. I find it peculiar that they called him. And I almost feel like it's his attempt to solidify that the OB entries, no one can mess with them. No one can do anything to them. Everyone must record everything that has happened. Mm. Honesty and honesty must be there. Mm. You know, I, I, I just, <laughs> it just feels like, and I heard a lot of people also complain, like this witness feels like a waste of time, right? Yes, it was to do that. He likes doing that. Those ones where he feels that there were a lot of questions about and he calls this like the issue of head of what the the, the SWAT team. Yes. Yeah, he's just doing that too. And he somehow manages to stretch the examination of these people that honestly are not connected to what is happening. Yes. In this case. That does, I mean, you have power to call these people to solidify your case however you want to so another thing that i was also hoping that he he would be asked you know is this element of torture in its techniques um he can he himself identify if a person has 
being placed with a plastic bag can he identify when a person has been electrocuted can he identify if a person uh, has been slapped a couple of hours ago such things that i was interested that they would maybe perhaps help give clarity as a station commander would see do you examine people that go in and out of the cells every day every hour himself yeah it would have been interesting mm, but i guess there there was no question like that yeah there was we're still going to cover what happened today guys so for now it's a wrap on what happened on tuesday and please like comment share and subscribe if you're not already subscribed okay the party still continues we still have a lot more to unpack with you guys we'll be back very very soon <laughs>